Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm actually indoors doing this broadcast today because for two reasons. <clears throat> I don't know if you can actually see just how windy it is outside at the moment. Uh, yeah, I think you can see it now on your screens. Uh, it is really, really windy. Not only that, it's also absolutely freezing outside as well. Despite the fact that we've got lovely sunshine, there is a really, really cold wind blowing at the moment. And I'm hoping that I should actually uh, get some form of uh, uh, weather broadcast <laughs> from the lovely Amanda as to the state of the weather. Uh, but I'm just looking at who's looking in at the moment. Shane Bowen is there. Andrew the Fridge Watkins is tuning in. And uh, I'm not sure how windy it is up in Exmoor or how windy it is on the Black Hills at the moment over in Wales. But uh, today it is not uh, nice weather at the moment. So I've decided that I'll do my broadcast actually uh, from inside. OK, inside the uh, inside the, the bedroom. Just a quick look at the cats. Look at them. What a life of Riley these boys all have all lying on the bed. Uh, that's uh, uh, who's that there? Uh, that's Boots and that's uh, uh, Nipper, the grey one. And over there we have Brian as well, all lying there enjoying themselves. Right, so let me just quickly switch around uh, my screen. Right, there we go, switch around the screen. Uh, can I just say thank you to Techbox for sorting out my tablet again yesterday. Uh, it's running really, really well. They even changed the screen cover as well. So it looks like a new uh, a new machine. And to be honest, I went yesterday actually seriously to buy a new tablet. But because all the kids are learning lessons online, not a tablet to be had on the island. All right. Well, not a brand, not display models, which all look like they've been through the wars, but uh, no tablets. So there you go. Right then, let's have a look at what's been going on because there has been quite a bit going on in the last 24 hours. Uh, so uh, the COVID stats then, uh, 8th of April, 2021, it's a Thursday. Where has this week gone? Uh, it is now day 154, 154 days. We are still in lockdown at the moment. Um, new infections then within the last 24 hours, some uh, positive news on that. It is down uh, from the day before where we had like a almost a record 4,309 um, uh, cases yesterday. Today then, uh, I can report to you 3,445 new infections were recorded across Greece. So that's a move in the right direction, uh, making the grand total since the pandemic started at uh, 285,015, uh, of which most of those are male that have been affected. There were nine new cases identified after checks into the country, which is a heck of a drop uh, from before, where we had 30 uh, uh, found at ports of entry into the country, and today only nine. According to the national stats yesterday then, there were three new cases in Lefkada, there were no new cases on Kefalonia, uh, there were 10 cases on Corfu and there were nine cases reported on Zakynthos. However, locally reporting, uh, we can actually say that this morning it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was published that there were only three cases reported locally on Zakynthos. Not sure where they were, who they were or anything like that, but uh, locally three cases reported. And at the moment... Um, there's been no change to the number of 12 people are, are hospitalised here on Zakynthos in the Corona Clinic and one person is in the ICU. But other than that, uh, no other further information on that. Um, looking at that, that means this month of, uh, uh, of April, uh, we've had uh, 57 uh, cases of the virus for April. So again, um, it looks like it might be starting to abate. Anyway, uh, as it comes for deaths at the moment, there has been 79 new deaths, uh, sorry, 75 new deaths uh, across Greece, which is down from the day before as 79. Uh, bringing the grand total up to 8,607. The average age of those people, 79 years of age. 96% of those, again, underlying health problems or over the age of 70. And once again, to put that in context, the death rate, average daily death rate in Greece 
uh, was uh, 329 deaths a day. And uh, once again, our condolences to those families that are affected. Um, moving down now to critical cases at the moment. Critical cases are down slightly. Uh, there was 751 people in ICUs across the country. That number is now down to 749. 491 of those are male and 258 of those are female. Once again, uh, and again, a good point that has been raised uh, by the lovely lady Jane is that we don't know if these critical cases, when they do drop, are people who survive i.e. they are discharged from their hospitals or wherever they are, or they get moved into um, just a, what would be classed as a corona ward rather than being in, in intensive care, or whether they pass away. Uh, but we don't get given those figures. So, But that would be of interest as to how many people who do, when the numbers do drop from the critical cases, uh, how many of those have survived and do leave hospital. Anyway, uh, today's news then. Um, while the Greek government plans for Monday's reopening for schools after the uh, negative self-test uh, of teachers and students is carried out, uh, the pharmacies of Zakynthos uh, uh, have not yet received its first batches of the test uh, that were expected to arrive uh, on the island. It's now been saying that the uh, batches will probably now arrive on Friday. Yeah. Anyway, speaking on Hermes Radio, the president of the Pharmaceutical Association for Zakynthos, Andreas Vitsos, uh, noted that until Wednesday morning, neither the online platform, uh, which is obviously necessary, as that is where you put the scores on the doors, as it were, uh, that has not started to work. And so, therefore, they've also not received any of the uh, self-test kits either. So, again, they're not in a position to do uh, to distribute the self-test kits. And that means that students and also teachers who are supposedly to mandatory take one of these tests before they are allowed to go into work. Obviously, they haven't yet arrived. Anyway, Mr. Vitsos wanted to make it clear is that the first stage has already been announced that the self-test will only be distributed to secondary school pupils and to teachers during normal pharmacy hours and not when they obviously cover as they call on call work. But uh, again, they are still waiting for these uh, tests to arrive and as soon as they arrive, uh, they will obviously start to issue them. They also said an another issue that he wanted to highlight is that both the self tests and the rapid tests are prohibited in the pharmacy area. Uh, this is a directive that will be fully compiled uh, uh, with with so there is not a danger to public health. Uh, one concern expressed by both pharmacists and parents, students and teachers in Zakynthos is whether there will be necessary time for the timely distribution of the self-test to students and teachers before they return to their schools since they should be uh, served within the opening hours of the pharmacy. Anyway, in each pharmacy, 75 tests will be initially distributed while their feedback, especially for Zakynthos, depends on the ferry routes as it is, it can only be done once a day uh, with the morning route from Kalini. So basically, I'm not quite sure what they mean by that, to be quite honest, uh, whether they mean that <clears throat> they are expecting to send their, uh, well, they're supposedly sending their their stats, their actual, excuse me, <coughs> they expected to send their results via the online uh, connection, uh, but uh, rather they're expecting the ferries to be delivering uh, these uh, supplies uh, in the morning uh, so that they obviously start to distribute them. So at the moment, in a nutshell, uh, the online platform's not open and up and running and the pharmacies are saying they haven't yet received any supplies to be able to distribute them. And when they do get them, uh, the pharmacies here are only going to get 75 tests to give away initially. And the priority is for teachers and for children uh, of that age to be tested before they can go back to school. So again, we'll wait and see how that all pans out over the next couple of days. Anyway, um, Minister of State Georgios Grapatis on Tuesday indicated that Greece's high schools may reopen 
uh, for the uh, in-person classes, as they're calling them, uh, next week, as the coronavirus self-testing kits are expected to become widely available at pharmacies across the country. <laughs> anyway, the Government Expert Committee of Health Advisors has already discussed moving ahead with the opening of schools and the, on the condition that the self-test kits are available and mandatory. The self-diagnosis tests have already reached the country and we estimate that all the pharmacies in major cities uh, will be supplied by tomorrow and all pharmacies across the country by the end of the week. Uh, Lepritas said in comments on the Greek Sky TV. He also added, I think that w I think that we will be able to open schools on Monday as they have been closed for a long time. And this has had a serious impact, not just on pupils, mental health, but also on learning matters as well. Uh, Gerard Pytus said that the government aims to prioritise high schools and then middle schools arguing that elementary schools have been open longer this academic year and also it is easier to extend the year at the primary level than it is at the secondary level. Anyway, the Minister of State also appeared cautiously optimistic of the nationwide travel being allowed by Easter uh, in early May. So those people who want to go and visit people um, over the Easter period, maybe we'll see if that happens, but I, I'm not holding up any uh, breath on that. And Agrippatus also said, if all goes well and we do not have a major epidemiological setback, it is reasonable to assume that we'll have uh, interregional travel over Easter, though not among the regions that have been uh, hard hit, of which we are technically one of those. Also, some good news then. Uh, Low-cost airline Ryanair has announced dozens of new flights to Corfu, Zakynthos and also Ithaca uh, for this summer. Uh, the flights to Zakynthos, which are as follows. There's going to be a flight from Italy, or Barry, there. Two flights a week on a Monday and a Friday. Milan, also in Italy. Uh, there's going to be two flights a week on a Monday and a Friday from there. Uh, also, Naples as well. There's going to be uh, three flights a week every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, Budapest in Hungary, uh, two flights a week. Uh, that's going to start on the 2nd of the 7th, and that will be on a Monday and a Friday. Also, Warsaw as well, two flights every Monday and Thursday. And for Stansted in the UK, Ryanair flying here to Zakynthos. Amazing. Uh, two flights a week, uh, starting on the 7th of the 2nd, 7th of June. Uh, two flights every Monday and Friday. So there, that's another route here to the island, as long as you're allowed to get on those flights. Also, as well, an interesting story, Ermi's News has been writing about complaints here on the island about serious problems with water supplies at the moment, uh, which are facing many villages in Zakynthos, uh, mainly in the areas of Kerry, uh, also Agios Leon, Volimes, Lithakia, and uh, Agricos, and uh, Anaphanetra, and uh, Vasilikos, yeah. It seems that uh, uh, the residents actually in Kerry, uh, I've never realised this, have been without water for the last 10 days, uh, while also in Agios uh, Lanatas, uh, there's been no water there, believe it or not, for 15 days. Now, the, the residents of the villages in, in the last 24 hours have obviously given this problem to the mayor and the president of the DS, asking for an urgent uh, solution. Anyway, Ermi's News uh, has also had communications with officials from the Municipal uh, Water Supply Company who were also informed that the problem will be addressed immediately and that the water supply will be normalised uh, by the end of the week. And <laughs> we're already in Thursday. Anyway, the problem of the water supply in many villages, it said, was due to a series of faults that occurred in the last 24 hours in the main water supply and uh, they could not immediately be restored on the one hand because there was no machines available and on the other hand because the service crews were under functioning after positive test cases were detected in one of the employees. Anyway, after the rechecking of the employees at noon on Monday, uh, the workers returned to work normally and what the residents of the island now expect is to see as soon as possible is water running normally from their taps in their houses. Anyway, the problem of the water supply remains one of the most serious and continues to face the island and especially the mountain villages. 
A definite solution is expected to be provided after funding has been secured from the Antonis Tritis project, uh, both for the project of replacing the main pipeline from Agios Leon to uh, uh, Oxyhora and for the project of replacing a section of the ex water supply pipeline from the pipeline from uh, Ias Maria. So again, uh, I'm not sure if you're one of them residents who's been affected by no water for the past 15 days or past 10 days. Let me know. I'll be curious to know. I do know that here where we live in uh, the Macarado area, uh, Pantocratera last year was also having lots of problems with water supply there. A friend of ours was saying that uh, she didn't have water for about five days in that location, but that was obviously sorted and fixed. But anyway, just one of them nice things to know. Also, another uh, story here on Zakynthos, because... Today, I was thinking about doing this today, uh, but there's been another case of fire caused by negligence uh, here on Zakynthos, and this came to light on Saturday, uh, the 3rd of April, uh, around about uh, uh, four minutes past four, the uh, local fire brigade was summoned to a fire up in the Volimez area, uh, which was uh, basically a forest fire. Anyway, they managed to extinguish the fire, but after investigation, uh, they have actually put a fine on a 70-year-old man uh, for causing a fire by negligence. Uh, the fire, fire brigade pointed out uh, to all residents to remind them that in the forest areas, uh, the current legislation in force regarding the, the universal use of fires, fires are prohibited in forest areas. People are also reminded that they must make sure that if they do have a fire in areas where they're allowed to have fires, and don't forget, you're allowed to burn rubbish up until the 1st of May. You must have some form of extinguishing equipment standing by. So if things take a turn for the worse, you can obviously uh, basically try and do some little fire uh, prevention before it takes hold. Anyway, this gentleman obviously uh, was in an area that was forested where he shouldn't have been putting a fire out. And uh, therefore, he has been fined. They've not actually said how much the fine was. Um, but uh, please be aware, if you live on the island and you're going to start burning rubbish, like I was going to do that today, but the way the winds are today, I don't think I'm going to bother doing that. Uh, it is your responsibility. And if you get, if you have a fire and it gets out of control, uh, guess what? Uh, you're culpable for that and you will be fined for that. And also the fire brigade asked in their public announcement uh, just to remind people that in case of any fire, uh, immediately inform the fire department. There's two ways of doing that. You can phone them on 199 or you can phone them directly, believe it or not, on 26950 uh, 22191. Okay, 26950 22191 and uh, they'll be out as quick as they can get out. All right, there you go. Anyway, um, another serious story that is uh, taking quite a, a turn now in the, uh, in the national Greek news is the head of the Athens Prosecutor's Office has ordered an investigation to allegations of physical and verbal abuse as well as sexual harassment made by 22 former athletes of the rhythmic gymnastics against an uh, unspecified number of coaches. Anyway, the probe is being launched against the backdrop of similar reports and lawsuits involving actors, directors, and also the country's uh, sailing federation as well. Now, the allegations were made in a letter sent to the Greek president, uh, Katrina. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Mitsotakis also received a letter as well. And later, the Sports Federation's athletes also received uh, a letter uh, describing the incidents that took place when they were young and training to become uh, gymnasts. Uh, the Catherine newspaper understands that most of the complaints uh, were from athletes from Thessaloniki and the incidents date back to 1985 and based on the allegations which included beating, psychological abuse, corporal punishment and sexual harassment. Anyway, the preliminary investigation will be conducted by the prosecutor, uh, Astophilos Andrew, and obviously uh, people will wait and see what the outcome of that. And as uh, has happened specifically uh, over this last uh, this last year, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, um, sexual violence and domestic abuse 
and um, uh, child uh, exploitation have really come to the fore in Greece. It had been a subject that had been kind of brushed under the carpet, but now it is getting brought out into the public light and certain people uh, are now paying account for their activities in the past. Once again, it is reminded that if you experience any domestic or any sexual violence and you live in Greece, you can get help. You can either call the police directly on 100 or you can call the dedicated helpline on 1440 1440 and remember uh, not only do they speak Greek but they also speak English as well so if you don't speak Greek very well you will speak to somebody who can speak in English and obviously you can obviously put uh, or explain to them what's going on and they'll be able to follow that up and offer you advice or even uh, get you um, some counselling or whatever you need help wise so once again that number 1440 um, and finally uh, my finally story today is a number of a number of um, little stories about what's happening with lockdown at the moment across uh, across uh, Europe and also across the world um, interestingly I saw this uh, anybody in Liverpool at the moment a Liverpool nightclub is going to trial a a couple of raves believe it or not where basically 6,000 people are going to basically go to a couple of raves that are going to be held in the Bramley Moor Dock Warehouse as part of uh, government trials uh, to trials for live events. Basically, tickets are going to go on sale next week. Anyone going, uh, whether you're vaccinated or not, uh, you'll have to take a lateral flow test administered by a testing officials before and after the event because they obviously want to see uh, if anybody catches anything, if there's any change in people's medical thing. And obviously, I think this is a good thing to do, especially when you look at we've got our nightclubs here and stuff like that. It'll be interesting to see how this actual trial works out. And if you know anybody who's going to this, uh, these couple of raids, I don't know any more than this at the moment. I think there there is an article in the Liverpool Telegraph, I think it is, uh, where you can cross check that and have a look for yourself. So just to let you know, there's a couple of raves on the go and they're going to trials it 6,000 people, which is a good substantial amount of people. They'll test you before you go in. Uh, they don't care whether you've been vaccinated or not, uh, because there won't be many people vaccinated, that's for sure, because they don't fall into criteria, depending on their age. Um, You'll be tested before and then tested after. Now, also as well, what was interesting, uh, I saw another article saying that an open letter uh, from Christian leaders in the UK to Boris Johnson concerning vaccination passports. Now, these group of Christian ministers have written an open letter to the prime minister opposing the vaccine passport. As uh, Christian leaders said, we envisage no circumstances in which we would close our doors to those who do not have a vaccine passport. They write. So if you're a religious leader, uh, you can sign that as well. So again, having to have a passport to go to church, because all we've been talking about really is having a passport to go for a drink or going to a pub and everything else. And also you've probably seen over the Easter period, the heavy handedness of the police authorities in Ballam and uh, where they basically raided a, a Catholic church where Polish people were having a Catholic mass at the time, uh, not only once, but twice uh, over the uh, Easter period. Uh, and then I saw one fabulous one of a Jewish synagogue in uh, Canada where uh, the police came to shut the synagogue down and this uh, rabbi absolutely gave it two barrels to the police coming to enforce the law by telling them to get out calling them the Gestapo. And to be honest, if you're going to walk into a synagogue and say, right, everybody out, um, you are onto a hiding for nothing, absolute hiding for nothing. And uh, I've got to be honest, these police realised they were out of their depth. They were trying to enforce rules which to any sane person look like this is madness what you're asking us to do. Walk into a synagogue, shut it down and throw everybody into the street. Uh, and the, um, the rabbi there was not having it whatsoever. So again, that is, uh, that's something to keep an eye on and to watch out for. Also, interestingly as well, the Euro News reports that Hungary now is easing its lockdown despite the fact that it's had massive coronavirus surges. 
Hungary has one of the highest infection rates in Europe, but it's, it is easing its lockdown, having administered the first dose of the vaccine uh, to more than a quarter of its population. This is also something to look at as well. Uh, Greece, to be honest, in effect, has had one of the lowest infection rates since the start of uh, the pandemic. Um, we are still lower than everybody else across Europe, except for one country, and I'm going to reveal that in just a tick. Um, and we are still locked down at the moment. Uh, either the vaccine is working or it's not working. Let's get it working then. Let's get people out. Let's get people, you know, off out doing stuff. The shops now here are open. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'm so pleased to see that our retail shops are open. But we still need to see the restaurants. We still need to see the bars. We still need to see the cinema open and running. And again, uh, this easing of lockdown has to now start happening. We need the kids back at school. Uh, we need uh, kids to get their education. And we need kids just to mix with each other uh, because that's something that they've been denied for a very long time. And stop this online education because it's all just a gimmick. It doesn't really work. The only place you can learn stuff really well is on YouTube, to be quite honest. And that's because you want to learn it, not because you've been forced to learn it. Uh, so, again, I shall keep an eye on that and hungry and see how they get on as well. And also, literally, just before coming on air um, from one of the news sources that I, use, I like to use, a guy called Alex Berriford, the voice of reason, um, it seems um, nobody's reporting this in the UK but on the European top uh, 10 of countries, Britain is number one for having the lowest death rate. Their death rate has even been lower than ours here in Greece. Uh, the highest vaccination rate. Everything Britain has done in regards to conforming to what has to be done uh, with lockdown and everything else is being done now. But nobody's reporting this in the UK on the mainstream media. No one is saying that Britain at the moment is number one. The British public have done as what they've been told to do. Um, the fact that uh, businesses are still closed, still locked down, they're still talking about this passport at the moment. And yet, uh, for all and everything that people have done in the UK, they're still technically locked down at the moment. And uh, why? So, again, I'm going to keep an eye on that. I've not had any other substantification on that story. But, again, if anybody sees anything, hears anything, let me know, and uh, I'll put it in for the, maybe the news tomorrow. But so from that perspective, then, it should mean that coming away on holiday should be easier for you to do if Britain is number one across Europe. Uh, oh, and maybe they're not counting it because it's uh, we're outside of Europe. Anyway... Uh, so therefore, passports and all of that shenanigans that's going on, there's no need for it. And also, just the fact is, you vaccinated people. Are you saying the vaccine works or not? Because the point of having the vaccine was to protect you, was to save you, was to be able to make you lead a normal life. And trust me, I listened to another expert this morning who was talking about basically, it's never going to stop. It's never going to change. Let's take the word uh, flu out put COVID in its place and we start living with it because you're never going to fight it. You're never going to stop it. You do what you do. You take your chances. And unfortunately, some people probably may not survive. And, and again, some people may get it. Some people may get it, not even realize they've had it and, and still carry on and function normally. So again, at the end of the day, it's life. And also another interesting stat I saw was this. 30,000 people died in car crashes uh, in the UK. Have they banned driving? No, I don't think so. Yet the death rate from COVID was a lot lower than the 30,000 in car crashes on a day. OK, I think that's basically come of it in a nutshell. The figure might be slightly skewed, but basically 30,000 people die in car crashes. But we don't stop people driving, do we? So it's like... Do we go outside in case the sky may fall down on our heads? No, we still go outside because the sky may or may not fall down on our heads. So again, a certain sense of common sense has to now start coming into play. Right, anyway, that's me with my little rant for the day. Let's have a look who's tuning in. I can see that we've got a weather report coming on the way from the lovely Amanda. Uh, Alf Ling is watching. Nice to see you. Shane Bowen up there on Exmoor. How you doing, buddy? Uh, thanks for tuning in yesterday, and I'm glad you enjoyed the tunes that I played for you as well. 
bless you. Uh, Alan Cowell is also tuning in as well. Lindsay Lamb is also tuning in. Jack Harmer, my old Rack Reg buddy, tuning in. Also, Will Bland is watching as well. Nice to see you. And she says, Gallimere and Gins, great show yesterday. And welcome to some good old-fashioned English weather. It's cold on Exmoor. Yeah, it's cold here. Despite the sun being out, it's bloody freezing at the moment. Uh, and Amanda says, good morning, Ginge. Uh, cold winds blowing, mostly cloudy with some sunshine. Highs of 15 degrees. Have a good day. What's the wind chill factor? No, I'm only joking. Uh, but anyway, uh, Debbie at Wilson's home is also watching as well. Nice to see you. Emma Marku down over there in Essex is tuning. Jan Lawrence is tuning in as well. Rosewood is also watching. Angelina Luansis is also tuning in. Nice to see you. Chippy Woods in Spain is also tuning in. Uh, Andy Johnson is watching as well. And Mark Pumphrey is also watching. Rathwedge Buddies. Uh, Steve Hinkling says, Gallimera, sun is shining here this morning. That's right. Just rub it in about how great the weather is in Stoke-on-Trent today. <laughs> Bless you. Anyway, Wiggy Win Stanley, I was speaking to Wiggy just before I came on air. Nice to have you tuning in, fella. Nice to see you. Uh, Cy Grindley, also Raffredge Buddy, tuning in as well from Wendover, over near Halton. Uh, Linda and Gary in Essex, also tuning in as well. Uh, Karen Bush, also tuning in. Nice to see you here as well. Uh, John Illingsworth is also tuning in tuning in as well. Uh, Wiggy says, morning from Cyprus, the ambassador of Wigan. I hope to be making a state visit to Magdalena's in September, representing the Wigan Casino uh, Northern Seoul. Well, if you're getting here in September, Wiggy, I look forward with excitement and bated breath to your arrival, sir. And we'll make sure we have a guard of honour ready for you uh, as well. And you can inspect the troops and uh, basically, we'll make sure that our shoes are shiny and clean and they're on the right feet. All right. Well, I shall look forward to seeing you, big buddy. Anyway, Steve Hinkling is also watching as well. <laughs> I've already said that, Steve. Like. Philip Ellis is there as well. Jill uh, Jeff Steed as well. Nice to have you looking as well. Michael Forfee is watching. Uh, Yvonne Hughes is watching. Uh, she says, morning, Ginge. Hope you have ha are all happy and safe over here. Yes, we're all happy and safe because... We can't really go anywhere, so uh, we're all happy and safe, and we're just we're we're more pissed off and safe, shall we say? Because we just want to get back to normal. We want to know where we stand for the summer. Uh, also, George from um, the Obelix Restaurant is tuning in as well. Lovely to have you tuning in, George. Uh, Diane Kemp is also watching as well. Nice to see you. Vicky Wood is watching. Uh, Julie White says, good morning from a cloudy Yorkshire. Uh, Christine Wildridge is watching as well. Julie Stevens is watching. Lyndon from Wales is watching. Give you a wave there, Lyndon. Matt Williams is watching as well. Teresa Ann Huggett is watching. Uh, Yanni uh, Taskos is also watching as well. Nice to see you tuning in. Nice when Greek people tune in as well. I do appreciate that. Uh, Tim Crystal says, morning, uh, buddy, thanks for the tune yesterday. Cheers, fella. I, I didn't really read your uh, proper message till quite late last night when I was just reviewing some of the comments that were coming through on the program. The problem I have sometimes is that when I'm doing my live shows, I've got a, a chat area on Mixcloud open. I've got a chat area on Twitch open. I've got a chat area on Facebook, my own Facebook page, the Magdalena's Facebook page, my Ermi's uh, Facebook page. Uh, plus, I've also got a Twitter uh, open. I've also got LinkedIn open. So I'm continually rushing around this loop of contacts wherever people are tuning in, uh, getting uh, whatever they want to hear. And I didn't really read your comment. I saw, oh, all I saw was Elvis and you in a car, but I didn't realize that you were waiting to go into the hospital. So I, I do apologize on that count. I hope all went well and uh, that you, you're doing okay, buddy. And a friend of ours had exactly the, the, the treatment you had yesterday and um, it's not nice but it's a necessity uh, I'll say no more than that but anyway I'm glad you're on the mend buddy we need you all right anyway uh, Maria Hadelberg from Sweden is watching John Bailey is watching he says morning bruv Sol Andy is also watching as well Kevin Bell Paula Brigham uh, Diane Camp says Gallimera from Basingstoke old base I used to like DJing in Basingstoke I used to DJ in the Litton Tree down there uh, many that was in the years before it became like a student town and it was like only the old were there uh, but that's changed now all the older grown up uh, all the younger grown up anyway uh, Gallimera from 
from sunny Sweden. Oh, you've got sunny Sweden. Uh, Karen says, I hope you have a good day. Dave Foley, Raff Rage Buddy, is looking in as well. Sandra Gibson is watching. Rainer Pete Dillon is watching. Trees around. Huggett says, good morning. David Lowry's watching. Gail Marsden. Christine Brown is watching. Tim Crystal says, thank you. And Barbara Telford is watching. Now, listen, I'm going to have to go. I'll be here all day just saying hello to everybody. Uh, once again, I'll keep my ear close to the ground. I'll see what goes on. Um, um, by the way, just to let you know, yesterday's uh, show is up online um, for those people that wanted to um, re-listen to the show yesterday. Some cracking tunes. I've got to be honest. Some people were asking for some cracking tunes yesterday. Uh, that is up online. You can watch that on Mixcloud uh, and hear the music there. Unfortunately, no pictures, just the audio. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow... Uh, I will be uh, broadcasting live again tomorrow uh, from Studio One here in Macarada. Hopefully the wind will stop <laughs> blowing and you'll get a good signal. And uh, also as well, don't forget Friday night, tomorrow night as well, I've got my dance anthem show on beachradio.co.uk. And I've got to be honest, I really enjoyed putting the last show together. And this show that's coming out on Friday, I think it is in my opinion, maybe a better show than the one before. But anyway, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, and also, don't forget Sunday as well. I've got my Northern Soul show as well. So Wiggy, the ambassador for Cyprus, uh, he will enjoy that. Um, so again, uh, once again, a, a, a weekend of music as well as news and everything else. Just got to quick, say a quick hello to Mike Glattonley as well and Christopher Lloyd-James also who are watching as well. Give you a quick wave back. I'm going to disappear away now. Maybe I'll do a burning. No, I'm just looking at those trees. No, I think I might have to leave that maybe till tomorrow. Anyway, you take care and I'll speak to you again soon. Ta-ra.